This is the MRTV review of the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. And if this is your first time here, and if you're just as excited about VR and ARSB, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. So the long wait is finally coming to an end. These are the final versions of the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus that will be delivered to backers and that the general public will be able to purchase really, really soon. But the question is, was it worth the wait? Are these devices the next gen devices that VR enthusiasts have been waiting for and that will catapult the VR industry to the next level? The answer is a resounding yes. I'm happy to tell you that the true second generation of VR headsets with a wide FOV has finally arrived. Are these headsets perfect though? Not at all, but its pros outweigh their cons and even though there are quite a few kinks to iron out, they will still make all of the current generation headsets look really dated in comparison. There is no question at all, for VR enthusiasts who want to have the highest immersion possible right now, these are the headsets to go for. But now, let's get into the details. For all of you who have never heard of the Pimax 8K and 5K+, Plus, the headsets are the result of the most successful VR Kickstarter campaign ever, raising more than 4 million US dollars in the end of 2017. The main selling point that got the VR community excited were the wide FOV of 200 degrees and its high resolution screens. The headsets were supposed to be delivered to backers in January 2018, but delivery was delayed until now. Let's have a look at the features of the final devices. The main difference to all of the current headsets like Vive, Rift and Odyssey is without a doubt the wide FOV, where current generation devices probably have around 100 degrees horizontal FOV, the new Pimax headsets boast a maximum of 200 degrees diagonal FOV, which translates to around 170 degrees horizontal. Also, the displays are a visible step up from what the current generation has to offer. The 8K version uses two screens with 3840 times 2160 pixels resolution and the 5K model uses two screens with 2560 times 1440 pixels. However, the input signal to both devices is only 1440p, so the 5K headset receives its native resolution, while for the 8K model, the signal has to be scaled up. Therefore, you cannot hope for a clearer picture with the 8K, but only for less screen door effect. But we will find out about that later. There's another Pimax version in the pipeline that is called 8KX, which will drive the two 4K displays at their native resolution. Other than the displays, all the features of the Pimax 8K and the 5K Plus are the same. There is a manual IPD adjustment at the bottom right that will allow users to adjust the IPD from 60 to 73 millimeters. The area between the lenses reminds us of the Rift that also uses similar elastic textile materials. Now what's special about the Pimax devices is that they were developed with modularity in mind. At the bottom, you will find a USB-C connection that can be used by different kinds of modules that extend the functionality. One of these modules that has already been developed and that I could test as well is the Leap Motion Hand Tracking module. With the module attached, your hands are represented in VR and can be used to manipulate the virtual worlds. It works like a charm and brings immersion to yet another level. A lot of other interesting extension modules are on the way like a Send module, an eye tracking module and of course a wireless adapter. As what the tracking is concerned, the Pimax devices are compatible with Lighthouse Tracking 2.0 just like the Vive Pro, but they will also work if you still use the old 1.0 lighthouses of the original Vive. Tracking just works as great as we're used to from the Vive headsets. There is a built-in microphone and the upcoming rigid head strap that was not available yet for this review will feature built-in headphones as well. The headsets come with a 5 meter cable that connects to your computer using display port and standard USB. There is an additional power adapter that plugs right into the cable. Both Pimax headsets are compatible with Steam VR games out of the box and even Oculus Rift games are supported without the need to install additional software like Revive. 
As what the prices are concerned, at this moment in time, no official pricing has been announced yet. But to give you an idea, the complete Pimax 8K bundle, including two controllers and two base stations, was 799 US dollars. And the Pimax 5K bundle, that also included controllers and the base stations, was 699 dollars. You can expect higher prices for the retail versions. So now that we have a basic understanding of what we're looking at here, let's get into the actual review. And we start with the field of view. Let's not beat around the bush here. The FOV, the field of view of the Pimax headsets is truly amazing. The difference as compared to the current headsets like Rift, Vive, Vive Pro and Samsung Odyssey is simply mind blowing. And this improved FOV is clearly star of the show here. With the current generation headsets, your window into the virtual worlds is limited to around 100 degrees horizontally. You're just peeking into the world as if you look through binoculars. Without a doubt, we all got used to this already, but having this limitation removed is in the best sense of the word, an eye opener. Immersion wise, the limitation was what was holding VR back. With the Pimax headsets, it's now more like looking through a ski mask than looking through binoculars. You're still aware that you're wearing something and you will be able to see borders on the right and left, but it is simply so much better. There's absolutely no comparison and once you go wide FOV, there is no going back. Whenever I try my old headsets nowadays, I can't quite believe how I ever could enjoy them. The jump to the second generation is just so massive. The Pimax headsets offer three FOV settings that can be changed in the accompanying driver software. Large, normal and small. According to my own measurements, the large FOV is around 170 degrees horizontal, normal is around 155 degrees horizontal and small with its 125 degrees horizontal is still bigger than what we're used to from the current generation of headsets that have an FOV of around 100 degrees horizontal. I normally go for the normal FOV for the reasons that I'm going to outline in the next section. And this section is all about distortion. Unfortunately, the wide FOVs of these next generation headsets introduce whole new technical problems that the current generation did not have to deal with to such extent. The biggest problem is distortion. Now, for these wide FOV headsets, the panels are placed at an angled position. And, well, to make up for this, whole new lenses have to be constructed. Now, lenses always introduce distortions. However, with these kind of custom-made lenses, these distortions are a bigger challenge. Now, to deal with the distortions, there's software and so-called lens profiles are being introduced. And these lens profiles pre-distort the picture so that after the picture goes through the lenses, the most natural picture is achieved. I was part of the so-called Pimax M1 tester group, a group of people that had access to a pre-production unit and that gave feedback to the company so they could improve the device. Now, during these three months of testing, I came across two main kinds of distortion. For the first kind of distortion, it happens at the outer peripheral edge of the vision. And for this kind of distortion, while it's noticeable, I didn't feel that it's an immersion breaker. For the second kind of distortion though, that was a bigger problem because for this kind of distortion, the whole world, the whole VR world would move with me if I look to the left or to the right. Let's say if there is an object in VR and I look to the left, the object would move with me to the left. And if I looked to the right, the, the object would also move with me to the right instead of just staying in place as it should like this. So that kind of distortion was a big, big problem. Now, let me tell you the facts straight. For the most part of the three month testing period, I had dismissed the project because of that kind of distortion. It was simply unacceptable for me. Now, Pimax tried to solve the problem and they sent over lens profile after lens profile in new versions of the software, but none of them could really solve the problem. It was just at the end of the testing phase that they finally nailed it. They sent over a lens profile that worked really nice and that solved the problem and the VR world would no longer move with me. As what the distortion at the outer edges of your peripheral vision is concerned, it is still visible, especially if you look for it. 
To deal with this problem, Pimax has introduced the so-called normal FOV mode. In this normal FOV mode, the outer edges of the peripheral vision are actually blacked out and therefore distortion is gone. Now I can live with this kind of workaround because in that normal FOV mode, the FOV is actually still much bigger than anything that's on the market today. So for me, that is the sweet spot that lets me actually enjoy the device. There still might be a bit of distortion as compared to the current generation headsets, but the added immersion of that huge FOV more than makes up for it. And again, once you go high FOV, you can't go back. Panels. Now let's have a look at the panels. The Pimax 8K sports two 4K panels with a resolution of 3840 times 2160 pixels per eye. So having two 4K panels does not make the device an 8K headset and that 8K moniker can simply be dismissed as a marketing term. However, the resolution of 3840 times 2160 pixels is still enormous as compared to the 1080 times 1200 pixels of the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. One still has to keep in mind though that these pixels are spread over a much wider field of view. So one-to-one -one comparisons are not really fair and we will simply compare through the lens pictures later. The Pimax 5K Plus panels work at a lower resolution of 2560 times 1440 pixels per eye. Now even though the resolution is lower here, it is important to understand that both headsets are actually using a 1440p as their input signal. So while the 5K Plus panels are driven at their native resolutions, for the 8K, the signal is simply scaled up. Therefore, you cannot expect a sharper picture here at all. The only benefit you might expect is less of screen door effect, and we will compare that with through the lens pictures later. If you would really want to make use of these 4K panels that can be found in the Pimax 8K model, then you would have to drive them at their native resolutions, but that is not possible with the current Pimax 8K model. And that is where the upcoming Pimax 8K X model comes into play. For the Pimax 8K X, this is exactly what happens. The 4K screens will be driven at their original resolutions and you can be sure that I'm going to review the Pimax 8K X on this channel here as well. Before we compare the two Pimax headsets with each other, let's compare them with the current generation of VR headsets. In this first picture, we're comparing the Rift, Vive, Vive Pro and the Pimax 8K. But which one is which? So you can stop the video now and guess for yourself. So do you think you know which picture belongs to which headset? Well, let me reveal it. So as you can tell, the Pimax 8K definitely looks better than the Vive and the Rift. For the Vive and the Rift, with your naked eye, you can see the screen door effect. Now for the Pimax 8K and for the Vive Pro, they are much closer together and we should zoom in here to see some differences. Also on this zoom level, the differences are very small, but in my opinion, the Pimax 8K looks a bit better than the Vive Pro. Now let's have a look at the 5K Plus. Also with the Pimax 5K Plus, we can directly see that it looks better than the Vive and the Rift. Now comparing the Pimax 5K Plus with the Vive Pro, in my opinion, the Pimax 5K Plus does have the edge over the Vive Pro, especially in terms of clarity. So let's zoom in here as well now. On this zoom level, you can very nicely see the subpixel structure, Pentile for the Vive Pro and RGB stripe for the Pimax 5K Plus. And again, I prefer the clarity of the 5K Plus here. Now let's go back to the Pimax 8K. This is a scene from Elite Dangerous and as you can tell, the Pimax 8K looks much better than Vive and Rift. And again, it's a very close call between the Pimax 8K and the Vive Pro. Again, I would say that the Pimax 8K looks a bit better than the Vive Pro. Let's do the same comparison now with the Pimax 5K Plus. Also here again with the Pimax 5K Plus, it crushes the Rift and the Vive. There is no comparison at all. And also here 5K Plus and Vive Pro closer together, but I'm calling it for the Pimax 5K Plus simply because of the clarity. And again back to the 8K. Now we're looking at the scene from Skyrim and I do like the Pimax 8K's picture the best, but I do believe it does lack a bit of sharpness. 
So let's compare this with the Pimax 5K Plus. And here with the Pimax 5K Plus, it does also win against Vive Pro, Vive and Rift, and it does look more clear than before, but we also do see a bit more of screen door effect. Now having that much improved FOV together with this kind of clarity is truly a joy. On top of that, the sweet spot is much bigger for the Pimax devices, where for all the current generation headsets, you will still need to move the headset around a bit to find the perfectly sharp spot. For the Pimax, you hit it every single time. High clarity, a much improved screen door effect, even though still visible, and a big sweet spot are a winning combination for me, and both Pimax devices outdo the competition, especially taking the big FOV into account. Now, since both headsets are using LCD panels, we have to talk about the black levels as well. For LCD panels, the black levels are seldom as good as those found on OLED panels, because for the LCD panels, we always have the backlighting that's shimmering through even when the scenes are black or dark. Here's a through the lens video of the Vive Pro playing Elite Dangerous and have a look at the blacks. They are perfectly dark. It is truly a joy. But unfortunately, of course, we still have the Godray problem because the lenses of the Vive Pro are not really great. Anyways, let's check this with the Pimax 8K. So in direct comparison with the OLED screens of Rift, Vive and Samsung Odyssey, the Pimax headsets clearly cannot compete and darker games will look better with OLED panel headsets. For me, the black levels are still acceptable though, and it's not a deal breaker since certain compromises had to be made to be able to sell an affordable white FOV headset. There's a small gleam of hope though, because Pimax is aware of the problem and has announced that the intensity of the backlighting might be editable in future iterations of the driver software. So now let's compare the Pimax 8K with the Pimax 5K Plus. Leaving all settings the same, I prefer the 5K's clarity over that of the 8K. Probably the clarity results from a better panel since the 4K panels are quite new in production. Also, the 8K picture will be scaled twice. Once down, before the signal is being sent over the display port and once up in the device itself. For the 5K Plus, the picture does not have to be scaled at all and panels are driven in their native resolution. The only advantage that the 8K has over the 5K Plus should be less screen effect since more pixels mean less dark areas between the pixels. And indeed, zooming in, we can see more screen effect with the 5K Plus. But still, see for yourself how much clearer the Pimax 5K Plus is and how much easier it is to read text. Unfortunately, Pimax did not supply me with any further information on panel sizes, used panel technologies or any further reasons as to why the panel of the Pimax 8K does not look as good as the panel of the 5K+. Plus. So I can only follow my own observations and if I had to choose which panel I would prefer, it would be clearly that of the Pimax 5K+. Plus. Let's have a look at the lenses now. The lenses are custom made Fresnel lenses and they are huge as compared to the current gen competition. They do a reasonably good job in allowing you to enjoy the wide FOV. Pimax went through several lens iterations to arrive at the lenses in use now. I have witnessed the previous iteration and I can say that these are indeed a big step up, especially in terms of God rays that have been greatly reduced. There are still visible gut rays in high contrast scenes though, and we are going to compare them with the competition now. And still, the reigning champ of gut rays, the Oculus Rift. The headset is not aging well and it's time for a successor. Vive and Vive Pro are using exactly the same lenses and that's why they have exactly the same amount of gut rays. And as you can tell here, it's a bit better than what the Oculus Rift has to offer, but it's still bad. I didn't include the Samsung Odyssey into this comparison review because it has exactly the same panels as the Vive Pro and everything that I say about the Vive Pro does apply to the Samsung Odyssey as well. However, I want to point out that the Samsung Odyssey lenses are better than those of the Vive Pro and of the Vive. Now let's have a look at the Pimax headsets. As you can see, the Pimax lenses have less God rays than Rift, Vive and Vive Pro, but God rays are still visible in high contrast scenes. 
Overall, the lenses do a good job of allowing users to enjoy the much improved FOV and also offer a way bigger sweet spot than all of the other headsets on the market. Performance Now let's talk about performance. During the Kickstarter campaign, Pimax had announced that you will at least need a GDX 1070 as a minimum requirement. Based upon that, I had purchased a GDX 1070 laptop. Now, unfortunately, it turned out that actually this GPU is not powerful to enjoy either of the devices. You will be able to run less demanding games on a GDX 1070, like for example, Job Simulator. But if you want to play more demanding titles, you will have to go down with the quality settings in the driver software. While that is possible and will help with frame rates, the games will look so bad that it's not actually worth it anymore. Now again, I must clarify that this is the case for both headsets for the Pimax 8K as well as the Pimax 5K+. If you would have hoped that the Pimax 5K Plus is the less demanding of the two Pimax headsets and that it would decrease the minimum system requirements, I must disappoint you. Performance-wise, they are nearly the same and they will pump out the same amount of FPS for the different games. So again, the Pimax 5K Plus will not decrease your minimum system requirements and it's just as demanding as the Pimax 8K, which also surprised me. Here are some FPS values for games that are tried on the GDX 1070 with the Pimax 8K and the 5K Plus at Pi Tool Quality Setting 1 and Steam Super Sampling at 100%. Steam VR Home 63 FPS, Job Simulator 73 FPS, Budget Cuts 60 FPS, Rec Room 55 FPS, Skyrim 32 FPS, Elite Dangerous 27 FPS, Project Cars 2, 26 FPS, Raw Data, 21 FPS. So as you can tell, you can play some of those games, but they won't look or play great. To be really able to enjoy either of the devices, you will need a high-end computer. Now, just for these devices, I built such a computer. And if you want to have a look at the components that I used to build a Pimax-ready computer, have a look in the description below. Now with this new computer, I ran the same games as above and now I could finally enjoy them. Raw data 75 FPS, budget cuts 90 FPS, Rec Room 73 FPS, Skyrim 80 FPS, Project Cars 45 FPS, Elite Dangerous 45 FPS. And that is all with the Pimax 5K Plus at Pi Tool Quality Setting 1.0 and Steam Super Sampling at 100%. So without a doubt, for both headsets, the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus, you at least want to have a GDX 1080 Ti. Games and apps will run well and the interesting part is that there is still a room up for improvement as you can tell, demanding games can still not reach the full panel refresh rate. Moreover, games at PyTool setting 2.0 look gorgeous, but still, with the 1080 Ti won't run smoothly. The devices are already a joy with the 1080 Ti, but will probably get better and better with each new GPU generation, so these headsets are truly hardware sellers, just like Crysis was. In terms of panel refresh rate, the Pimax 8K runs at 80 Hz and the Pimax 5K Plus runs at 90 Hz. But from my test, actually, I more measured 91 Hz, so you get 1 Hz for free on top. Anyways, I personally cannot tell the difference between the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus at all. And if you can see it, then congrats to your superhuman eyesight. As already mentioned above, there aren't really any performance differences between the 8K and the 5K+. Plus. Now, the only difference is that at the same settings, the 5K Plus will look better than the Pimax 8K. And if you want to make up for it, you might need to increase the super sampling or quality settings of the 8K, which in turn will need more resources. So will future graphics cards make the Pimax 8K look better than the Pimax 5K+. Plus? Highly unlikely, because both headsets will still use exactly the same input signal. If you're looking for a Pimax device that will without a doubt look better with future graphics cards, then wait for the 8KX, because for the 8KX, the 4K displays will be driven at their native 4K resolution. 
comfort. The Pimax headsets are much lighter than they look. When you first pick them up, you'll be surprised by their light weight because they do look much more bulky. Comfort wise, I would say it's on par or even a bit more comfortable than the original Vive. There's ample space for your nose, so you won't feel any unwanted pressure in that area like in other headsets. The face padding, similar to Vive as well, is made from a foamy material and is attached to the device with Velcro. Pimax says they will offer several different sizes of it. My headsets came with a simple elastic head strap. It does the job, but Pimax is working on a better rigid headband that will balance the device on your head in PSVR style and I'm very much looking forward to it. Until that time has come, I personally have modded the Vive Deluxe audio strap onto one of the headsets, which is really simple and improves comfort a lot. I will leave a link to my instruction video in the description below. Now lots of people might wonder if you could wear glasses in the headset and I have some good news for you. Yes, you can. There's more space for glasses than for example in the Samsung Odyssey and in the original Vive. However, the lenses are very close to your eyes and they will therefore also be really close to your glasses. This might cause scratches, so you better add some spacing in between the headset and your glasses. Or you could also go for the customized prescription lens frame that was part of the Kickstarter. Anyways, most people wearing glasses should be fine with the new Pimax headsets. Overall, I can conclude that the Pimax headsets are comfortable devices, much more comfortable than they look. Controllers. The Pimax controllers are not yet ready. Once they ship in 2019, they will closely resemble the Valve Knuckles controllers. There will be a version with a trackpad and another version with a thumbstick. Of course, I'm going to review both of them once they are available. Until then, you will need to use the Vive One controllers. Microphone. After the Vive Pro microphone disaster, I was quite a bit anxious to try out the microphone. The Vive Pro was plagued by terrible pop noises that made the device not suited for live streaming with the built-in microphone. For the Pimax, I'm glad to say it does not have these problems at all. There are absolutely no pop noises and you will not need an additional microphone on top of the built-in one in order to talk with your fellow players or record a live stream. The only thing that should be noted is that recording volume is not quite loud enough and that these levels still need to be adjusted manually, which is no problem though. Game Compatibility The Pimax headsets are compatible with nearly all of the Steam VR games and most of them simply work out of the box, which is kind of surprising, taking into account the bigger FOV that they have to be rendered in. However, the experience is not as plug and play as you might be accustomed to from your Vives and Rift. There is still some fine tuning involved and you must find the perfect Pi tool quality setting yourself that works the best for your specific setup. There are quite a few variables in place. The Pi tool quality setting, the Steam super sampling and a few other compatibility settings that you will find well hidden and not really well explained within the Pi tool. It is definitely a big difference to what you're used to and hopefully there will be automatic profiles for games in the future. A nice surprise is that the Pimax headsets are compatible with Oculus Rift titles out of the box, so you don't need to download and install additional software like Revive. You can simply import the Oculus titles into the Pi Tool software and start them from there. It works surprisingly well and playing Oculus games like Robo Recall and Lone Echo with that huge FOV and the much improved resolution over the Rift is just a true joy. I'm personally playing those incredible titles again just because they look so much better than they do on the Rift. While the majority of games work really well on the system, the huge FOV does cause some new problems. You might have to grow another VR stomach all over again because free locomotion with that huge FOV might make you feel sick. I love free locomotion and for the current generation of headsets I always use free locomotion, but 
for the big FOV headsets, I had to get used to playing Skyrim using free locomotion all over again. Also, for some games, the comfort settings, like restricting the FOV using vignettes, do not work anymore because wrong areas of the field of view will be restricted. So hopefully, as the next generation of VR headsets become more and more popular, game developers will patch their games accordingly. Conclusion it was truly worth waiting for the Pimax headsets. The Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus are the real first second generation VR headsets that are available for consumers. Even though the Pimax headsets are not perfect, the pros by far outweigh the cons and make all of the competition that is currently on the market look dated in comparison. Especially the increased FOV is a true game changer. After having used the Pimax for a while now, there's absolutely no going back to the current generation low FOV headsets. The jump from Rift, Vive, Vive Pro and Odyssey to the Pimax is tremendous and you will easily get used to this increased immersion. But then going back to Rift and Vive, you will question yourself, how could you ever enjoy these prehistoric low FOVs? The visuals in both headsets look great and without a doubt better than Rift and the original Vive. However, if you come from the Samsung Odyssey or the Vive Pro, you should not expect huge improvements in terms of clarity or resolution. The visual clarity and the visible screener effect are only slightly better on the Pimax devices as compared to the Vive Pro and the Samsung Odyssey. But taking into account that this is true over the whole bigger FOV, then this is quite the achievement. If you're looking for the next big leap in picture quality though, you should wait for the upcoming Pimax 8KX because that device will have a native 4K input resolution per eye. However, if you are a VR enthusiast and you want the headsets with the highest immersion possible that are available on the consumer market right now, then these are the headsets to go for. At the end of this review, there's only one question left. Should you go for the Pimax 5K Plus or should you go for the Pimax 8K? And I strongly suggest you to go for the Pimax 5K Plus. The overall picture quality is simply better. And even though there's a bit less of screen door effect with the Pimax 8K, the Pimax 5K Plus really simply looks better. For the Pimax 5K Plus, it receives the native resolution and there is no upscaling or downscaling involved, which might impair the picture quality. So. Go for the Pimax 5K Plus now and then further down the road, once you're ready for a true upgrade, then go for the Pimax 8KX in the future. And that's it for the MRTV review of the Pimax 5K Plus and the Pimax 8K. I truly hope that this was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. As what? As what? As what the distortion? As what? As what the distortion? As what the distortions? At the? As what the distortions? Five minutes later. As what distortion? As? As what the distortion at the outer edges of your peripheral vision is concerned? The FOV is actually still much bigger than anything that's on the market today. So for me, that is the sweet spot that lets me actually enjoy the device. Yes!